Okay, so I'm going to plasma cut the basic shape and then do a little bit of forging on it to get it to how I want it. Um, basically, it's sort of time saving. I could just forge it all, but you know, with my arms, it's so much easier just to cut it out. So, we're just going to freehand it all. Now, I'm hoping I've learnt a lot of lessons from my first chef knife. Uh, I don't know whether any of you saw it. I'm sure one or two of you did. Uh, but it turned out more like a, a hunting knife. Or sort of woodsman's knife. But uh, So I've learnt a few things from that one. Which I'm going to try incorporate into this one. Now this rasp I'm using this time is actually much wider. Uh, but much thinner than the one I used before. They're both um, hellers. Um, this is a, an XL, I think this one is, the green tang. Um, they're a new one on the market, or relatively new on the market. And they're actually bloody marvellous for, for working with, for shoeing. So I wouldn't go back to the old ones. As I say, they're much wider and thinner. So hopefully that'll make quite a nice knife. Right, so that's the basic cutting done. Get it in the forge. I'm going to bend it from about there, just down a little bit, which will give me sort of a better angle for the actual bladey bit. Let's get rid of this rubbish. Get her in the forge. Just going to tidy up the tang. You can see there really how much thinner it is. The other one was, I suppose, quarter an inch, maybe a little bit more than quarter inch thick. And this is probably, I don't know, under three sixteenths thick. Which certainly will be by the time I've sort of hammered the teeth back in. So I'm just trying to tidy up the the cut edge just so I don't have too much filing to do obviously this is going to take a little bit of time just to fiddle about with because as usual I don't really know what I'm doing so it's all going to be a bit of guesswork, which is half the fun, really. Right, so I've just bent that handle. I could have sort of cut it that angle when I cut it out of the rasp, but I thought it was just as easy to leave it straight along the top and bend it. I think that's actually probably a little bit too much, so I'm just going to pull it out a bit. I'm going to leave it at that. So you just put a little bit of a bend on it. So by the time you're holding it, it puts the blade, oop, and he dropped it, a bit um, in a better position. So I'm just going to tidy that transition up where I burnt it. See if we can get a better shape in it. I've been using my old, my old, the one I made previously, quite a lot actually. It's it's a very nice knife. It's it's as sharp as, but it's it's a little bit unwieldy. It's it's pretty heavy, um, and probably would be better suited to the outdoors. But it's it has been used a lot, and I love it. I don't know if it's just because I made it or just because it it works nicely. See, I've just sort of got rid of some of that transition. I want to knock the majority of these teeth back in. So I'm going to get it hot and keep knocking them back in. Because I want to take most of them out. I want to leave some so that you can tell what it is. 
But as, as someone pointed out in my last video, oh, that you shouldn't do that because food will get caught in those crevices. Well, yeah, maybe, but you know, what the hell? I like the look of it. It's a nice feature, so I want to keep some of it. But yes, the you know the majority I want to get out. I'm just trying to define what shape I want. I'd, I'd like to try and drop this point a little bit, but I don't think it's going to work very easily. What I might try and do is grind that in, a drop, slight drop on the point. I think it's going to be easier than trying to forge it in. Anyway, that's the idea. You can see the general shape is coming quite nicely. I'm just going to thin this bottom edge out which will hopefully give me a little bit more width as well. I think the last one, I can't remember now, I haven't watched it for ages. I can't remember whether I did any much forging on it at all or whether I did it all by grinding. Anyway, I'm going to forge this one a little bit. You can see how quickly that cools out. I haven't really got that very hot. But it's it cools so quickly. And compared with that tungsten I did the other day, it's really quite tough. So it just makes me realise how soft that tungsten felt. Someone made a comment on the video of, that it looked like I was forging lead and that's a bit how it felt. It was like slightly tough lead. You know, you could really hit it and your hammer sort of sunk into it. Get this a bit hotter this time, I think. Try to. Again, you can see how it cools so quickly. teeth as well. See how much scale comes off this when you you work it. I'm guessing that's a high carbon part of it. We're getting there. So another heat. I might call it a day at this heat, get this last one, thin it out a little bit more towards the, the blade edge and knock in a few more teeth. Sounds good doesn't it, knock your teeth in. Just level it out a bit, That's as you spread it at the bottom it uh, sort of curves upwards. So you just need to straighten it out again. Right, I'm going to call it a day at that, so I'm just going to make sure it's straight. Give it an eye down it. And I think that'll just about do it. And that's that for now, I think, forging. So we're going to go over to the big grinder and try and define the shape. So we'll get this one going. Just tidy up the actual shape of it. It shouldn't need a lot because I've you know done reasonably well on the, the forging. Just a few little nicks and things that I want to get out before we get into the thinning of the blade. I want it fairly straight there and then taper, 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 taper. 
paper down to the point. And this is where I want to going to grind a bit of a drop in the point. I think just a touch, not a lot. I just feel it would be nice to have a little bit of a drop on it. Cool that off because it's getting a little bit on the warm side. Just touch up the handle. No, don't need to worry too much about the handle because that will get a little bit more um, attention once the I put the handle on it. So I'm actually going to put a handle on this one um, for no other reason than I can. Now that's not going to fit in there, so I'll have to grind that bit out with a ordinary grinder, I think. Just touch that edge up. I think that's about it for now. We'll get onto the, the belt grinder. Nice shape. I like it. Alright, so I haven't got a grinding jig, so I'm just going to use this bit of box section, just clamping it to the back of the box section. And I've tilted the the uh, table up at, I have no idea how many degrees. I'm just going to run it across and see how we get on. I'll just put a new, nice new ceramic belt on. So, I'll give it a run across there. Now someone said to me, you can see now that the belt is staying perfectly where it's put. When I first did this video of the, and you can see it's taking a nice piece off of there. You know, when I first did the belt grinder video, the belt was going all over the place. I had several people give me various suggestions as to why. Some were saying I needed a crown wheel. Well, I've already got a crown wheel. Um, turned out it was just the tension. Just needed a much stronger uh, ram on it, which I've put on it now. Now I've just stopped that and I've moved the whole thing over a bit and clamped it to the bench because it was creeping away from me across the bench. So I've just you can see in the disc in the back there I've just put a clamp on it so now I can go at it a bit harder. But yeah, so all it was, the belt moving around was the tension. Just needs a, a little bit more tension on it. Um so I just bought a much stronger ram off eBay for about three quid. I think I've got two in a pack for a five or something, oh, four, five or six quid, so they're about three quid each. Right, that's in the way. So I'm just going to stop a minute and think about this. I'm going to have to um, clamp it on slightly differently. A bit longer. Got it. So I just moved the whole thing along a bit. That should do it. I do like these ceramic belts. They're much more expensive, but quality is something else, you know, compared with the cheap and nasty ones I bought once before, which I've still got a load to use, but I'm using them slowly. They make a hell of a racket when they rattle over the, the uh, join. I'll just speed this up a bit so I don't bore you to death. Put that up straight and just take the spine off a little bit. It's funny, speed it up, you can see the belt does move a little bit, but um, nowhere near like it was moving when it was uh, under not enough tension. Chill it out a bit. Right, so apart from a bit of overheat there, 
and the fact that it's not very even along the bottom on each side or that side which I'm hoping I will address when I put uh, a finer belt on but we're getting there you can see I've taken a lot of the, the uh, scales off or the teeth off but still left enough so you can see what it was so I've just put one of those nasty cheap belts on and you'll hear the difference when it rattles over the the join I was really naive when I bought these these belts I thought uh, it was a reputable company or I thought it was a reputable company so I assumed the belts would be up to standard but they're really rubbish they really are Never mind, you live and learn. Oh, excuse me, just sneezed. Oh, just turn it over. Do the other side. <coughs> oh, excuse me, sneezed again. I don't know what's up with me. Something's got up my hooter. You can see I've got a little. Uh, tray underneath full of water that's collecting the the dust and you can see how much is gathered in there just from doing this job the pile of it turn it around again there's the cheap and nasty belts coming into action there you go that's what you get <laughs> oh dear there's your sign of your cheap and nasty it's gone at the seam yeah that's it clatters over them they're, they're just not well made never mind I'll use it for something or other use it on the lathe for doing bits and pieces so we'll call it a day at that anyway just cooled it off and I'm going to do a little bit of sanding by hand and then we'll uh, do some hardening and uh, tempering so stick it up in the vise and get a bit of wet and dry on it so I've just got wet and dry on a block it's quite fine this I think it's about 400 now I want to get it sort of reasonably smooth whilst it's in its soft state it's obviously much easier to do while it's in its soft state so I want to get as many of the marks out as I can now you can tell it's working because if you look there's a nice dark slurry coming that means it's working. So this could go on for hours, so I won't bore you, I'll come back when I've done a bit. Alright, so I've done not masses, but we've had a little bit of a go. Just clean it off. And it's got a lot of the marks out. There's still some in there, but you know, we've still got plenty of time to get a lot of them out. So before we go too far on the tempering, I'm going to drill a couple of holes in the handle for the handle to fit. This will show whether it's annealed or not. So if the drill squirts off it, no, nope, must have worked. Before anyone says, oh I didn't see you anneal it, you did. I took it out the fire and let it cool down. And that was it. That's all you need to do. I had, uh, I'm not sure which video it was. One video, someone was having a go at me for not annealing it. And I said, well, why do you need to anneal it if you're working it hot? You only need to anneal it if you, you're going to not work it hot. But once you've worked it hot, You've automatically annealed it. I'm just checking for magnetic. It's a little bit 
bent. So I'm just giving it, you can't see, but I'm just giving it a couple of taps to straighten it. Of course it's cooled out so quickly, we're going to stick it back in the fire. Because it's now quite thin, it heats up relatively quickly, but it also cools down tremendously quickly. See, that's still magnetic at one end and not at the other, so... Right, that's got it. That's non-magnetic all the way across. Of course, my oil dip isn't deep enough for this knife, so. But at least the blade end of it's in. You keep it moving so it's um, you know, getting fresh oil on it. Gonna turn that round and just quench that tang. Not that it's gonna make a lot of difference, but just want to get it all relatively cooled off. I don't really want any, uh, you know, either soft spots or brittle spots where there's a transition. So hopefully there will be neither there. Alright, let's give it a clean up. So I've taken the excess oil off and let's see if this file will skate off it. Yes, lovely. So that's hard as. So now we're going to get this scale off that came out of the oil. So I've given it a quick go with um, just a, a scotch bright just to get that black off. Now I'm just going to give it another go over with the Oh, didn't really tighten that up very well. I just want to show you, when I was uh, hardening it, I brought it out the fire and it was bent, so I gave it a couple of taps with a hammer to straighten it, and it's marked it. About five little dings where I straightened it, which I'm slightly annoyed about, but hey-ho, at least the blade's straight now it was purely the heating of it, it just bent. So never mind, I might be able to take the majority of them out when I finally finish it off. And I'm not going to go too mad with this um, wet and dry because um, it's obviously as hard as hard because I've tempered, I've, I've hardened it. So it's going to be really hard to get any filing done. So I'm just going to get a little bit off and then we'll take it home and temper it. And then when we bring it back, we should be able to get the worst of it out when we sharpen it. So that's got the worst off. Now what I'm going to do is this bit of wood, I don't know what it is, but it looks a nice colour. So I'm just going to cut a couple of pieces out of that. So that when we've finally got it tempered and bring it back, I'm going to stick them on, epoxy them on and grind that up. And that'll be quite a nice little handle. I'm going to oil it. So we'll take it home, as I say, temper it up, see what happens. Now I'm not going to drill the holes in these first because this might alter in length a little bit once it's tempered. It might not. Okay, so I got home, I put the oven on, I've got the knife in the oven, of course I forgot to put the camera on, so it's in. Um, so you'll see when it comes out, I've got it in at, let me have a quick look. That's 200 which is about 425 I think in uh, foreign so let's just we'll see what happens uh, come back in about 25 minutes or so because I think that's about all that's left uh, and we'll have a look so it looks like uh, 
Okay, time's just about up. I think if we go and have a quick look at the... Yeah, we've got a minute to go, so I'm going to get it out now. Let's turn that down. Uh, find my glove. Right, let's have a, a little look. Now then, you can see the temperature is... So it's just over 425, I think. And there it is. Let's get it out. And that looks quite a nice colour. Difficult to see in this light. Oh, shut up, hang on. Turn that off. Yeah, difficult to see in this light. Let me put the camera down for a second and we'll have a better look. Right, you can sort of see it. It's definitely brown. Sort of a strawy brown. And unlike my last one I did, which had sort of odd patches of different colours, this is fairly uniform over the whole knife. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. I was going to do it for much longer, but I don't think it needs to be because it's actually much thinner. I don't know if you can see how thin I've taken that down um, compared with the last one, which was pretty meaty. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens. I'm going to let that cool off. I'm going to take it into workshop tomorrow. See if we can clean it up and stick some handles on it, or a handle on it. So there you go. I'm quite pleased with that. That was... Uh, 200 which is about 425 and that was for an hour and a half and that was half the time my last one took but as I say let's see if I can show you the old one the other one we've got it here still use it it's you can see how much thicker it's a probably so I'm getting together yeah probably twice as thick so yeah that would probably be about right hour and a half for this one, three hours for the other one. So this one feels like a monster chopper which I should probably repurpose it as and reinstate that one as the new chef's knife hopefully. Anyway we'll see what happens once I get it cleaned up.